Welcome to my channel. I'm Gary Wiryawan, and today we're going to talk about the Panasonic G85 in 2021. Let's go. Now, before we continue with today's video, if you are a current subscriber of my channel, welcome back. I hope that you will enjoy this video and thank you always for your support for my channel. If you are a new viewer of my channel, also welcome. I hope that you will also enjoy this video. If you are into photography, filmmaking, micro photos, cameras and lenses, travel photography, or even if you're into music, home recording, guitar, rock metal, then you are in the right place. Please consider subscribing to my channel to support my channel. And now let's continue with today's video. So today we're talking about the Panasonic G85, especially at the end of 2021. Is it still worth it? Why I love it so much and why am I not upgrading to a new camera just yet? But before we actually talk about the camera itself, I want to notify you that I'm using a different camera, DJI Pocket 2, to record this talking head video because obviously my G85 is at my hand right now and we're going to talk about it. So it makes sense that I'm using a different camera so that I can better talk about the G85. If you like how the image quality looks from the DJI Pocket 2, please let me know. Also, if there's anything that you don't like from the DJI Pocket 2, let me know as well. This is for my feedback. Anyway, the Panasonic G85. This camera is my workhorse camera. It's my main general purpose camera that's almost replacing the GX8 in that term. I still have my Panasonic GX8, but now it's more focused for still photography camera as well as a supplemental B-roll kind of camera where my G85 is acting as my primary photography and video camera. I bought the Panasonic G85 back in 2019. So at that time, it's also not that new because Panasonic G95 was about to be released as well. So this is not exactly a new camera and it's been a few years and there's a lot of new developments in the world of micro four thirds camera as well as mirrorless camera in general. There are now better micro four thirds camera. There are now better mirrorless cameras from full frame APS-C whatsoever. So this is already kind of old, but I still like it so much. There are some things that I really like from the Panasonic G85. First, it's the stabilization. So this camera is equipped with in-body image stabilizer. So basically you can use all kinds of lens whether it's stabilized or not and the camera will stabilize it. Previously, before the G85, I have this Panasonic GX8 which also has in-body image stabilizer. However, the in-body image stabilizer doesn't really work on video. It's using digital stabilizer, which is different from the actual stabilized sensor on this camera. So it's not really suitable to create smooth video footage. However, with the Panasonic G85, it's now stabilizing even on video footage. So it's not only doing it for stills. The quality of the in-body stabilizer of the Panasonic G85 is almost excellent. No, it's not gimbal-like like what some people say. If you want to do a walking kind of footage or running kind of footage, yes, it will stabilize it a little bit, but not too much. You will still probably need a proper gimbal for that. However, in a pinch, if you are recording B-roll and if you are really careful, you can achieve really great smooth footage that looks almost like using a gimbal. So it's really handy and it saves me a lot of time when it comes to creating smooth B-roll footage. Next thing that I really like from the Panasonic G85, image quality. I know it's only 16 megapixels where all the other cameras are now uh, at about 32 megapixels, 40, 50 megapixels, 60 megapixels. 16 is very small. However, it's more than good enough for my needs, especially for my photography, where I don't really print. I just share my images on my social media uh, and send it to my friends and families. And it just looks so good. Even when I pixel peep, as long as I'm using good optics like this lens right here right now, the Panasonic Leica 15 millimeter f1.7 i can get great still image quality same thing with video image quality it is also really 
Good, this is my main YouTube camera for my talking head like right now. And it's been producing image quality for my YouTube videos that I think is really, really good. And it is really flexible. It doesn't have vlog kind of a color profile, but I'm using the natural color profile here and I tweak it just a little bit and I'm really happy with the result. Next thing that I really like from this camera is the weather sealing. So it's weather sealed and if you are also using a proper weather sealed lens then you can be fine when you're shooting in a light rain in a weather that is less than ideal. The camera is also responsive in my opinion. There's no really any hiccup when I turn on or turn off the camera, when I took pictures or when I record some videos. It never really hangs up or do any kinds of glitches or error or anything like that. And operating the camera is very snappy. You can just press on the menu or uh, when you change the settings, the ISO whatsoever. It is just snappy. It performs like a really fast computer. Speaking of changing settings on this camera, it has two uh, wheels that you can use to change shutter speed and aperture. It also has dedicated ISO button, quick function button, and there's a lot of customizable function buttons on this camera that you can use to do whatever you want to do with the camera. It is so customizable, it is so easy to use, and all the buttons that you need are just there. Next thing that I really like from this camera is the fully articulating screen. This is really, really important for me, not just to film myself, but this actually is much more flexible than the older uh, tilting only kind of screen, which is not that flexible and it's hard to use. I really much prefer uh, this kind of screens, especially for video and also for photography. The electronic viewfinder of this camera, this guy right here, is also more than good enough in my opinion. Now granted, this is using an EVF that is slightly smaller when compared to the Panasonic GX8. But I think so far Panasonic Lumix viewfinder has been the best ones when compared to the others like Sony or Fujifilm or whatever other brands. I think they are very good quality. I can see easily with the viewfinder of both of these cameras and it's just representing the image really well. Last but not least, I really love that there's a mic input in this camera. Now granted, other cameras like my Panasonic GX8 also has it, but what makes the Panasonic G85 special is the fact that there's a built-in preamp that sounds really good inside the Panasonic G85. So I don't have to use external preamp, I can just uh, put my shotgun mic directly into the camera and it will sound good. And that's something that's not really easily available in other cameras. Now that we've talked about what I like about the camera, now let's talk a little bit about what I don't like from the camera. First, slow continuous autofocus, especially during video. This is no secret. If you're using mirrorless micro four thirds cameras, then you might already know about this problem. And it's real in this camera. However, if I'm shooting in 1080p, not in 4K, it is focusing a little bit faster when it comes to continuous autofocus and it is almost usable. However, most of the time I'm using single autofocus anyway, so it's not really a big issue for me. Next thing that I don't really like from the Panasonic G85 is the slow shutter sync speed especially when I'm doing off-camera flash photography. So some of you might already know me for using off-camera flash for travel photography, for environmental portrait or stuff like that. And with the Panasonic G85, the shutter sync speed is only 1 one sixtieth of a second and it's kind of slow. But that is due to the fact that it's using a new shutter mechanism to reduce the shutter shock uh, that's making the image blurry when you're doing still photography in this guy. On the contrary, my Panasonic GX8 has a pretty fast shutter sync speed at about 1 2 50th of a second and sometimes I can crank it up to 1 3 20th of a second and it's really fast and you can uh, kind of uh, get a little bit of darker background when using this guy right here and still have the flash uh, firing at the same power. With this guy, you cannot really get that, uh, you know, dark background kind of effect. So you have to be mindful when using this camera for off-camera flash photography. 
Another thing that I don't really like from the Panasonic G85 that could have been implemented on the G85 is the added dedicated exposure compensation dial on the camera. It has none. You have to press special function button to activate the exposure compensation. On the contrary, my Panasonic GX8 has a dedicated exposure compensation dial right here. And it's very easy to use and I actually use it a lot. So yeah, it's missing on this guy right here, but it's not a deal breaker. I can still do it from the touch screen or I can uh, use any of the special function buttons and use the wheel dial. Another thing that I don't really like from the G85 is the fact that it doesn't have headphone jack. So I cannot really monitor my audio. So every time I record video, I will test my audio first. Uh, how it sounds and listen carefully on my computer before continue recording the video. And that really sucks because that means that for run and gun audio situation, I have to completely trust the camera. <laughs> and that's not really something that I uh, like from this camera. So I really hope that uh, someday the Panasonic G series will have added headphone jack on the camera. Last but not least, lack of slow motion capabilities in this camera. So when I'm shooting video, uh, when I'm doing talking heads like right now, I'm usually shooting it at 25 frames per second. And this camera at 4K can do 25 frames per second. And when I'm recording B-roll, when I'm recording supplemental footage for my videos, it's usually 50 frames per second. And then I slow it down to 25 frames per second and you get double slow motion and this guy right here cannot do 4k 50 frames per second it can only do 25 frames per second in 4k and in 1080p that's 50 frames per second uh i wish that i can go down to about 100 frames per second in 1080p and 50 frames per second at least in 4k but that's not the case with the g85 here but anyway this is an old camera in being able to shoot at 4k it's more than good enough for me now i want to share some key takeaway points as well as some conclusions to end this video and yeah the panasonic g85 is my primary camera right now and it will be for the foreseeable future i don't want to switch to a new camera just yet I really love this camera for its performance, image quality, easy of use, my familiarity with the camera, it just has this kind of mojo that I cannot really explain, but I really enjoy using this camera. It's not just a bread and butter kind of camera, it's really something that I enjoy shooting with. And speaking of shooting with the camera, my favorite lenses to use with the camera is this Panasonic Leica 15mm f1.7 right here, which is... Uh, my new talking head video kind of lens. So if you're watching my recent new videos on YouTube, it will be shot using this lens. And also my other favorite lens is this guy right here, Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter f2.8 for just general purpose kind of uh, photography and video kind of lens. And also this guy right here, the Panasonic 14 to 140 f3.5 to f5.6 this is my travel lens my ultra zoom kind of lens so i can get all kinds of different sorts of focal lengths from moderately wide angle all the way to telephoto and as i said earlier i'm not really tempted to switch to a new camera just yet i don't have the need to replace this camera this camera is still working fine and for my needs it's more than good enough so i'm not really tempted with the new gh6 gh5 mark ii or the new cameras from sony from fuji from canon i don't really have the needs to upgrade just yet i still love this camera so much even at the end of 2021 where this camera will be a few years old already so what i'm really trying to say is this if your old camera is still working fine, the performance is more than good enough, the image quality still meet your requirements, then don't upgrade. Upgrade your skills instead. Learn from other photographers and filmmakers. Watch some YouTube videos and uh, take some photography or filmmaking course because I think upgrading your skill is more important. You can get better result in your photography or your filmmaking that way rather than just upgrading your gear. Nowadays, people are always tempted with what's new, what's the latest, what's the greatest, what's the best camera, what's the best lens, this and that. 
And yeah, improving your camera will give you better image quality, performance, ease of use, and so on. But it's only half of the equation. It's not just about the tool, it's also about the photographer and the filmmaker, you and me. And improving your skill will also significantly improve your result later on. And I think it's something that you want to look at. And that concludes today's video. So that is all for today's video. I hope that you find this video to be useful. Please comment down below what is the current camera that you are using right now as your primary camera. And if you have any questions about this video, I will try my best to answer down below. Also, don't forget to support my small channel by liking this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel down below. It will really help me to motivate me to keep making these videos for you. Alright, thank you and goodbye.